Claire, you are in your home city. Um, you started not far from here. In fact, your career did start here at CUSAC. What has this whole experience meant for you? Yeah, to be honest, it's been pretty surreal um, to be back where it all began for me um, at a World Cup and it's, yeah, it's sort of come full circle. So it's um, something I never thought would happen in my career and, um, yeah, I've just, yeah, loved every moment of it. If you can raise your hand and we'll get the microphones to you for questions. A bit of a weird one. We saw um, Marta go out, and she's obviously been a legend of the game. We saw how emotional that was, even for the Jamaican players. Um, you guys have played her, and you've played her a few times as well in the Aussie jersey. Can you just talk us through what she meant for the for the game and, and your thoughts about Brazil? Yeah, I mean, um, Marta, she's a an absolute legend of the game, and what she's been able to do for women's football and to inspire so many young players, um, male, female. Um, just lovers of football. Um, she was everyone's idol um, and, yeah, just what she's been able to do for the game, six World Cups, absolutely incredible. Um, so she's definitely going to go down as as one of the best ever and, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to play against her a number of times and, um, yeah, she was the ultimate competitor and, um, yeah, she, she's definitely a legend of the game. Next, any... Others? Yep. Yep, I'm good to go. Yep. Oh, hi, uh, Kerry hi. from Channel 10. Um, pretty easy question, but how are you feeling at this stage? Yeah, look, um, I feel like we're in a really good spot. Um, we topped the group. Um, we were under pressure in the last game and and the way that we went about the Canada game, the way we prepared, the way we executed, um, it was just really mature, professional performance from us, and I think um, that gives us a lot of confidence going forward. We spoke to Mackenzie about the pressure she faces. Um, for the defenders, which obviously you're an important part of, um, how much pressure do you put on yourselves and on the back line to not to get to that stage where there could be a penalty shootout? Yeah, look, obviously we, as defenders, we put a lot of pride in clean sheets um, and to keep a clean sheet against Canada um, and Ireland is um, really good for, for our confidence as um, a whole defensive unit. Um, but yeah, it's, I guess it's not just the, the back line. We've really worked on our defence as a whole unit right from the front, um, which gives us a lot of opportunities in attack as well. So the better that we do that, the more we can um, you know, go on the offensive. So that's something we pride ourselves on. And against Canada, I think defensively, it was um, a really good performance. If I look at the, uh, the statistics for the attempts at goal, um, Canada's had 41. Um, your opposition this weekend um, are one of the poorest in terms of attempts at goals, which may suggest they can be contained. Um, do you see it that way? Yeah, look, obviously Denmark have a, a lot of quality players all over the pitch and world class um, in their final third. So it's definitely going to be um, a tough job for us to, to keep them contained. Um, but I think as, as the games go on, um, obviously your, your, your defence is going to be key. Um, and that's something that we've really worked on over the last few years is our defence as a whole unit and I think we're in a good spot. So I got full confidence that we're, we're going to carry that forward into, into the next game. All right, Alyssa. Alyssa? Yep. Hey, Alyssa from Seven. How are you going? Thanks. Um, I just want to ask you about the upcoming game against Denmark. Obviously, this will be the second time <coughs> you've played in the past year. How much do you go back and look at the previous time you first them and how much do you take out of that heading into Monday? Yeah, obviously it's, um, you do go back and have a look at the game and, and see what worked and, and what, what didn't work. Um, obviously it's almost been a year or over a year, so things have changed since then. Um, so, yeah, it's just about building from our last performance, um, seeing where we can hurt them, where we need to, to nullify them and uh, making sure that we execute the game plan on the day. Well, on the guard. You came out and said, you know, I'm not, I, I don't have any fear, I don't fear Australia, um, even though... Know that they've been doing extremely well and um, you know dominating and seeing her on the side and, and the like. Um, how do you feel coming up against Denmark? 
yeah, obviously it's going to be an exciting matchup. Um, they're a quality team, um, and I mean, no matter who you play in a round of 16 at a World Cup, it's going to be a tough match, and, and we're expecting that, and we're ready for that. And yeah, it's really exciting to to make it out of the group, um, and yeah, to play a round of 16 at home is yeah, it's going to be really exciting, and hopefully everyone gets behind us and and supports us, and we love playing in front of our home fans. So. Um, yeah, it's good. They're going to be really important for us as well. One more, or Jess? Yep. Yeah, going to Jess. Speaking of playing in front of your home crowd, you're from here. Uh, how many people will you have there? And you know, you say it's gone full circle coming home back to Cusack. What What's the feeling like for you being able to run out in your in front of your home crowd? Yeah, it, it's been crazy. And I think every game, um, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, the first one in Sydney was just crazy to to see how many people that came out and supported us. Um, and then obviously the second game in Brisbane, while it wasn't the result we wanted f for me to play at Suncorp um, with a packed out stadium is is pretty crazy. And then, yeah, Melbourne was was something else. They just, they just love their sport um, and they just, yeah, they really carried us home and it was, yeah, it's just been a pretty crazy feeling. We can't give Melbourne that much credit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jess. Um. Hogs just from ABC. Um, well, you spoke about making it out of the round of 16, and I asked Mac the same question, but I love your response on this given how many World Cups you've been to in tournament football. Um, the do or die situation that the team was in on Monday night, it being over essentially, if you didn't get a result, you're winning, you're top in your group. But do you feel like you have an advantage with that pressure that you had going into Monday night and that whole? campaign aspect being over if it didn't go your way um, and then taking that into the group stages at the, elim uh, the elimination stages now do, as an experienced campaigner do you feel like there is something that you can take from that moving forward yeah I think it's you know being Australian athletes we've got that in our DNA and um, as a team we we like almost like when our back's against the wall and and the pressure's on us a little bit um, I think that's when we sort of are able to, pr to produce our best. Um, but in saying that, like, pretty much any game at a World Cup's do or die. Um, and even in the, in the group stages, um, it's every game's a pressure game, um, whether it's the first one or the last one. Um, so we'll take that experience. Um, I think the, the group going into the game was really calm, despite it being do or die. Um, and I think that just shows the, the maturity that um, we have in the group, the character that we've got in our group, um, and that mentality of, um, I guess, the, the never-say-die attitude that has been ingrained in us um, for generations past as well. Got time for three more. I was just gonna, can I just follow up on that? So essentially, like, the Nigeria loss, in a way, is almost like the loss that you not needed to have, but sometimes that can come in in an elimination game and then it's too late, like the campaign's over, like in a way you were fortunate that that happened in the group stage, you could recover and you can have that lesson now of like we cannot make those mistakes again in this competition. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, I think it, it not, we didn't, obviously it wasn't in the plan to, to lose that Nigeria game, but um, I think the way that the girls bounce back shows a lot about our team and our character. Um, so I think moving, we can definitely use that moving forward. Um, and yeah, as I said, we'll we'll look to prepare and and execute the game plan as um, as best we can. And and yeah, I've got full confidence in the girls. We'll go to Jess, and then we'll go to Isabel. Hi, hello. Uh, Jess Price of Sky Sports. I'm interested in your mental processes, being that you've stayed at the top of the game for so long, been to five World Cups. How difficult is it to prepare yourself mentally year after year after year? Um, yeah, I guess that's that's definitely a challenge to to mentally stay, um, I guess, at the top of your game and making sure that you're doing everything that you can to improve yourself as a footballer. And um, you know, I, it's it's pretty easy to find motivation to play for this team. Um, I yeah love putting on the jersey and. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely been a challenge, but um, I think that's probably been one of my strengths as well is is mentally staying where I need to be throughout my whole career. 
Isabel, and then we'll finish with Anna. I know you spoke about martyrs before when I asked, and you said about her legacy, but is, I guess, have thought about your own, if, if this is your last tournament and, and your own legacy that you're going to leave? You spoke about, you know, how good it is um, looking at the next generation, looking at the hunt coming through, and I guess also Courtney Nevin and Charlotte Grant as well, but have you thought about your own legacy after this tournament? Um, no, probably not. I think I haven't thought about it that much, but um, for me... I've always wanted to leave the jersey in a better place to when I found it, and um, I think that's the aim of this team as well. Um, so that's not just my personal goal; that's that's all of ours. And I think you know we've taken that responsibility on as players, um, and hopefully we've been able to achieve that in some small way. And um, if I've inspired someone um, along the way, then um, I'm pretty happy with that. Finally, Anna. Fox, have you guys been watching a lot of the rest of the tournament, like getting together and watching it or by yourselves? And what have you made of it? There's obviously been so many upsets, so many teams breaking through for the first time, like um, Jamaica and South Africa last night, obviously. Like, yeah, have you been watching it? What have you made of the tournament as a whole, having that perspective that you've had over the years as well? Yeah, I think we, we have been watching it. Um, you know, yeah, we, we get together. Some, some players watch it together, some watch it in their rooms. Um, it's uh, it's been yeah I think it's been a, a huge success for for the whole game um, in Australia and just to see the amount of support that every game has got has been incredible um, and yeah it's just crazy to think that we've been able to achieve that here in Australia I'm really proud of that.